Good morning, good evening, good afternoon guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are very well and that you're doing great. Um, I am just posting this video. If you've not seen my last video about life updates and what my plans for the channel are, um, I mentioned that I was going to do an endometriosis related update. So for those who are new here, hello, you're very welcome. I post endometriosis related content, also lifestyle content, just take you along my life with me. And since taking about quite a while off YouTube, I'm not even going to work out how long I've been off YouTube, I have been receiving so many comments about an update on my surgery and where I'm at now with my endo. So if you've not seen my vlogs about my endo story and recovering from surgery, I was very honest with those videos. So I would definitely recommend you go and check them out. But for brief summary, I had ablation surgery in December 2022. I had a diagnostic laparoscopy on the NHS um, to diagnose endometriosis and they diagnosed endometriosis and uh, did ablation to remove it. So for those who don't know, there are two ways of removing endometriosis. There's ablation surgery and there's excision surgery. Excision surgery is the gold standard where they basically remove it from the root, whereas ablation, they just burn it off. So it's not actually the best practice to have this surgery. So multiple um, endometriosis in related influences will often call this the wrong type of surgery which unfortunately the re reality is that I will probably have to go for excision surgery at some point down the line but yes I wouldn't necessarily call it the wrong type of surgery because the only way of me getting a diagnosis would have been to have this surgery to have a laparoscopy anyway but it's just unfortunate that I just had my surgery from someone who is not necessarily a specialist in endometriosis, but it was on the NHS. So I recovered from surgery really, really well. I actually felt like I bounced back quite well. My symptoms were completely relieved and my quality of life went from here to like here. So I would always recommend anyone who's ever asked me, I've bumped into a few people who've asked me if they would recommend going for surgery or just leaving it. Thing with endometriosis is it doesn't have a cure and it will just keep growing away unless you do something. Um, and unfortunately, the only way to kind of strip everything back and start again is to have surgery. So my recommendation to people is always to have the surgery, but to find an endometriosis specialist to do it rather than just your regular gynecologist on the NHS. If you can afford it, go private because it will always help. However, I obviously at the time just went off the NHS and I still, like my quality of life was like skyrocketed, like I said. So it doesn't really, like it does matter, but also if that's all you can afford, then that's all you can afford. So for the first, I would say six months, my quality of life was so, so good. Um, before my surgery, I was unable to run because it just flared my endometriosis up too much. I went from like a flat stomach to looking like I was six months pregnant just by running like 1K. Um, and so I really found that the endometriosis surgery that I had really relieved those symptom symptoms. I had a lot less flare ups and I basically had no symptoms for about I would say four months five months that probably would have been a lot longer if I'd have had the right type of surgery but it is what it is the thing is I was in unbearable pain and I was unable to work I was unable to do anything for myself and so that surgery gave me my life back um and while I had the wrong quote-unquote surgery it still gave me four months completely pain through pain free and even now i have flare-ups but it's completely different from what it was before and i'm almost like grateful that i went I, well i'm not almost grateful i'm grateful that i went for that surgery and pushed and pushed to get the surgery because i do have my quality of life back yes i have flare-ups now but they're so much better than what it was before I have flare-ups now, whereas my life was pretty much one big flare-up before my surgery. Somebody asked me whether I would advise others to go for the procedure. Yes, absolutely. I actually had a conversation with someone um, a few weeks ago where they were saying, oh, I don't see the point in going for surgery because 
um it doesn't fix it it doesn't like there is no cure so what's the point but actually it takes you back to a blank slate um and yes it it will it potentially will grow back but at least you're starting at a blank canvas and your quality of life just skyrockets from having the surgery in my opinion and if you're watching this and you've had the surgery then leave comments below encourage people in in your story as well because your story matters as well and how you found things. So yeah, like I said, I had four months, maybe five months of like complete pain free. I was able to run and you'll have seen that through the half marathon training vlogs. I entered a half marathon. However, unfortunately, my endometriosis did start to come back and drip feed into things. And I was getting so much more flare ups um, when I was running. There were numerous runs where I had to ring my fiance to come and pick me up because I actually couldn't walk anymore and I was crying because I was in absolute agony and I'd done an out and back so I couldn't actually get back um so there were a few times where Matt's come in his car to pick me up with a hot water bottle and painkillers in tow <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that because it's actually quite bad and you know the thing about endometriosis is it affects everyone differently there are some people who are able to run and have no issues at all with running um, whereas for me, I just feel like I'm being absolutely stabbed every time I run. So I'm no longer able to run um, or I just kind of avoid it because I know it flares me up. But I am still able to swim and go to the gym. So I'm still able to be active. I'm still able to go about my life. I'm still able to go to work. I have an active job. I'm a swim teacher. So I'm like, like either in the water helping kids out or I'm on the poolside going and helping the other teachers to go get equipment for them and stuff like that you know it involves picking kids up out the pool and into the pool and and things like that so I have quite an active job and I'm able to do my job now as a result of that surgery the one thing I would say is when I had my surgery I asked them to check my bowel um for bowel endometriosis basically endometriosis can grow anywhere um they've actually found it on people's lungs before and and things like that it doesn't just stay on your ovaries so I asked them to check my bowel and they actually didn't do that. They only told me it was there and removed the bits on my ovaries. But therefore, like, I think it's still on my bowel and I do have a lot of bowel endo symptoms. I do have a lot of bladder endo symptoms. So I do think it's still there and I do know it's is probably growing back because I do get more and more flare ups as like time goes on. Um, I do think I've learned really well how to manage my endo though. I'm currently on the contraceptive pill, on the mini pill. Um, the one thing I would say about this that I've learned is if you have endometriosis, try and stay away from the combined pill, which is what they put me on first. The combined pill has estrogen in it um, and endometriosis is fueled by estrogen. So adding the estrogen is not helpful to your endometriosis. So I'm actually on the mini pill, which is progesterone only, so that it manages it. And while I know that it does not do anything for my endometriosis, it completely masks my symptoms, which I have wrestled with whether or not I'm happy with or not. And to be perfectly honest, I would actually prefer to be able to live my life than to be in absolute agony for the times that I'm on my period. So at the moment, I don't actually get periods on the um, mini pill. As a result, I get so much fewer symptoms from my endometriosis. I am aware that there will come a point where my pill is no longer able to mask my symptoms and like the symptoms will surpass the like ability of the pill to like mask them because that's what happened before my surgery. But I am just taking the pain as much pain free day as I'm getting at the moment. <laughs> I also take the, um, I think they're my UV, my endo supplements. They're absolutely unbelievable. I am hesitant about supplements because I really don't trust them. I think they're just expensive. However, these have actually changed my symptoms. And I find that I notice if I miss a day or two that I start having like more symptoms. So I would definitely recommend those to anyone with endometriosis. So yeah, I'm not completely pain free. I don't completely have no symptoms, but it is a lot better than what it was before my surgery. I am aware that I will have to go more than likely to go for another surgery in the future. And I am aware that my symptoms will creep up on me again. Um, but yeah, I'm just taking full advantage of the health that I've got at the moment. I do find though that um the biggest thing that I struggle with and I don't know if it's 
the the pill if it's a side effect of the pill or if it's a side effect of the endo is my face is so puffy i have so much excess water weight and i am a little bit more self-conscious like i'm not a little bit i am more self-conscious about the weight that i've gained because of my endo i have spoken to my doctor about it and they have said that i'm completely healthy they've taken like blood blood pressure like my heart rate and everything like i'm completely healthy so they're not too concerned about it however i am just like self-conscious a little bit more especially like with wedding pressure and everything like to do with that so yeah that's one thing that i would say that i definitely have the side effect of is the weight gain but i also don't know if that's to do with the pill or if that's to do with my endo or both because a lot of my facial puffiness came from when I went on the pill and I did have that as a symptom when I used to be on the pill like a good like amount of time ago um when I was like 15 or 16 when I was racing because I struggled with my iron then um so I don't know what what is causing that um but I do really struggle with like facial puffiness my face is a lot more puffy than it used to be and that does make me a bit self-conscious <laughs> so yeah that's where my endo is now I would definitely recommend you to speak to an endometriosis specialist if you are thinking about going to go for surgery. But I will keep you updated about what happens in the next um, however long with my endometriosis and changes in that. Um, but at the moment, I am mostly healthy. I'm mostly able to go about my life without too much pain. I just avoid things that trigger me. I find that sucralose is a sweetener um, and that triggers me. So it's in tango ice blasts it's in robinson's cordial things like that and i didn't understand why it flared me up um until i seen something on instagram about it being a gut disruptor it, as a sweetener it disrupts your gut um and that links to the bowel endo that i suspect that i have um not that they looked in my surgery but anyway <laughs> So sucralose flares me up, running flares me up, cycling flares me up because of the position. I find if I'm hunched over and for too long, it does tend to start flaring me up. I find if I have too much raw red onion, that flares me up too. But I love a raw, raw red onion, so I do have it in moderation. But yeah, let's just not talk about that. It doesn't like sucralose. If I have a sip of something with sucralose in it, then I know immediately. Like it's instant. Um... So I'm very, very sensitive to that. Whereas I have to have a lot of raw red onion for it to flare me up. Um, but there's just different things that I've been learning um, about what flares me up, what doesn't. And it will be a continual process. But I have learned so much about endometriosis. More so from Instagram and social media than I have from doctors. I actually went for my six-month post-op check. Um, and it was actually... 10 months after my surgery but I discovered that they actually did more in my surgery than they originally told me so they told me that there was actually an adhesion from my fallopian tube um that they had to remove which I didn't know they told me that originally that there was no adhesions however it wasn't I was asking quite a lot of questions and it wasn't actually my surgeon who did the post-op checkup um and every question that I was asking and I know this is common for most people um but it still makes me frustrated every question I was asking she didn't know because she didn't know anything about endometriosis she wasn't a specialist so the thing that I find frustrating is that I have learned so much about endometriosis not from my doctor and I think sometimes not saying that I know more than doctors, but I think a lot of doctors are extremely undertrained in endometriosis. And there are some doctors who have told me that I'm cured now or that, yeah, you can watch my endo story for more of this. I'm not going to get into this rant. But yeah, that's where I am at the moment with my endometriosis. So do stick around. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below because I always tend to reply to my comments. Thank you for bearing with me while I've been on a little bit of a sabbatical of YouTube. Um, but I'm back now. And if you have any content requests, then leave them below. I will try and deliver for you. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.